Hello. Recorded. Hi, Amber. Hi, how are you? I am good. So, everybody, I'm Arwen of Tarot by Arwen. And I'm Amber Honeyraven, the Big Fat Witch, and we are doing round two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kitty, kitty. Meow. Yeah, she, she likes to be involved, so we'll keep putting her down. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so one more again. Witchy Women Wednesday. <laughs> Coming at you on Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because my groovy little program didn't want to play. Let me put my phone in airplane mode because otherwise somebody somewhere will text me. Yeah. I put mine on do not disturb for that very same reason. <laughs> uh -uh. It's like people have a homing beacon. Uh, tell, oh. me, tell me if the wife... If if you say, I'm going to be busy on the computer from 3 to 4, if at 3.15. Oh, no. She's better. 3.01, she will call. If I tell her, hey, I'm going to lay down and take a nap, she won't call. But if I tell her, hey, I'm going to be really busy, or if, I'm a, or if I tell her I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb for an hour so I can write, then she'll call. And if she doesn't get an answer, she's like, oh, God, she's probably dead. I better drive home. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of love her for that, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take these out. Do I have, like, a a weird reflection on my eyes? You have, you have computer eyes. Computer eyes. Yes. There she goes. It's like Betty Davis eyes, but worse. Do we want to repeat our question that we answered last night? <laughs> yes. And I actually remember most of what it was. Good. Renee Birchsey asked us to... Talk about our most challenging or defining, I believe she said, moment on our path that kind of got us on our path and where we're seeking now. I'm going to go further back. Okay, so the reason I'm saying I'm going further back than I did last night is because we did this last night, and, and for some reason, I think Goddess wanted me to be a little more succinct. That's because it's all about me. No, <laughs> I'm going to go way back. So, um, I, you know, I come from a very agnostic slash atheist background, and I have always defined myself as such. You know, I went to church up until about the age of 12, and then I was like, no, I don't want anything to do with that, and then I was pretty much atheist agnostic. However, um, when it comes to paganism and my belief in goddess, I had a very defining moment after uh, I had some, some stuff happen in my early 20s that uh, pretty much showed me that there was another side to the whole thing. And, you know, when you're, when I was kind of in my atheist and agnostic belief system, I kind of looked at the world and the earth as kind of a flattened thing. I can put my finger here, I can put my finger here, and scientifically, this is what we know. And there is nothing else. Um, but I had an experience um, that I won't talk about in depth, but I had an experience that... Uh, very much showed me that, oh, yes, there is another side. And, yes, there is there are things in this universe that we cannot explain. And, conversely, there are things that we don't need a god or goddess to explain. We just need to know that there is another there there. Um, so that was my pivotal, you know, let's go down this path of paganism. Um, I kind of fine-tuned that uh, over the last probably three or four years with I have – I had some, you know, some deaths around me that really helped me kind of funnel that down. And I had some life-changing experiences that um, helped me funnel that down. And, I, you know, I can't really be more specific than that because, you know, some of it's like, you know, when it hits you in the heart, it's personal, private stuff, you know. But it, um, it definitely, I've had a couple of different moments in my life that it happened. And it, and it always hinged on... Uh, realizing that there was something way bigger than not just me, but way bigger than the world. So, yeah. yeah. And for me, I'm kind of going to rehash what I said last night. There really isn't a super defining, challenging moment for me. I mean, I've had crazy moments in my workings. Crazy. You know, had a goddess statue come to life and talk to me. I mean, crazy stuff, right? But my my journey to the path has been kind of 
always, and my astrologer, Julia, told me, she was reading my chart, and she, she said, when did you first know you were a witch? And I said, I don't know that I ever didn't know. I mean, I defined it in, in 80s. About mm -hmm. 85 is when I really, truly, that's when I dedicated. And she said, because you have Scorpio in the 8th house at zero degrees, which apparently is a, a thing. Um, but my challenges have been more staying on the path than getting here. Yep. You know, and sometimes I coast through rituals and just say, happy Yule, y'all, and go on. I don't like candles, you know, but I did for Samhain. I lit candles. I did my reading. I did my work. So, and how was you know, Samhain? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Samhain was great. Um, you know, and that kind of goes into, it kind of goes into something I was going to ask you about. So, Samhain this year for me was incredibly intense. I celebrated the one year um, crossover of my Gracie, my familiar. Um, and I say celebrated, but honored, you know, and celebrated, celebrated her life and honored her in a way that felt incredibly good to me and felt incredibly reverent. And it felt um, bigger than just, you know, having, having, having my animal cremated and having her in a box on the shelf. It was very much tying back into what her life was about and what our life together was about. Mm -hmm. um, so that was incredible. And, you know, we, we, I did some ancestry work and things of that nature and it really, it was just intense and beautiful, but you know, it really, what you just said really made me have a being moment. You know, those things, it's not getting to the path. Sometimes it is staying on the path because, and maybe, maybe you'll have a different experience with this. I find that the further I go into this, the further I funnel down, the tighter I get with my belief system um, and, and my workings and the things that I do, I find myself sometimes not wanting to adhere to the tightness of it. And by that, I mean, I don't want to celebrate every Sabbath. Um, I don't personally resonate with um, Ostara all that much. Um, maybe one day I will, but I don't want to, I don't want to celebrate it as some of the books say I'm supposed to, or some, how some other witches celebrate it. I just kind of want to do my thing. And, you know, sometimes in your head, you, you hear that little voice that says, oh, well, if you don't do it exactly this way, then you're not a witch or you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Have you had moments like that too, Arwen? I have. I've had to, um, kind of recreate some things for me because, you know, one level of some of the spring sabbats is fertility. I had the womb remodeled into a rec room a few years ago, so fertility's yep. off the plate. Yep. Um, but it's also seeds. Imbolc is the first seeds. Ostara is the second seed. Beltane is the next seed. And then you go Lama Slitha. No, that's not right. Almost with them a bond, maven. But but this Samhain was the last of the harvest. That's the root harvest, and so maven's a harvest, and Litha's a harvest. Oh, um, our llamas and Litha is not. This is a growth. But anyway, bleh. um, <laughs> but, but I had to relook at it. I had to relook at it, and you know, people talk about where they are. You know, your planting seasons. A lot of the Wheel of the Year work was done based on England. Right. You know, that's where a lot of Wicca's flesh got put on some old bones. You're not going to hear me say Wicca's an old religion. Right. You know, it's just not. Witchcraft is, and Wicca is a type or a, a kin cousin yes. to witchcraft. Um, and there's a lot of what I do is more hedge witch these days than it is Wicca. Have um, you found yourself, I, I know that, you you seemed just and may, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I knew when I knew you way back in the day, years and years ago, you seemed very very uh, not necessarily tied to Wicca, but you were very Wicca centric at that time. You were very ceremonial. Yes. You were very. Uh, there's to me there is a certain reverence that comes with Wicca. Um, it's a beautiful practice and there's a certain reverence that comes with it and I, I see you now just as your friend and someone who's able to see you through the eyes I'm able to see you through now I do see you kind of getting into this I don't know you seem you seem more comfortable in a way it's 
before I was celebrating with others and I was leading covens. And mm-hmm. part of my identity was wrapped up in that. Um, particularly when I lived in Denver, we had um, a coven. My partner and I were priest and priestess of it. We had people that came in and out. Um, and we did rituals, you'll pardon the term, religiously. Um, and the coven I was trained in, we did new moons, full moons, and sabbats. So we did esbats and sabbats, and we did the occasional dark as well. Um, so we did a lot of work. My my social self was wrapped up in who I was as a witch. Mm-hmm. You know, I taught at the College of Wicca and Old Lore in Denver. I, I did... You know, I went to cons and did tarot talks. So it was very, very, that's kind of who I was. And now in the years when I've kind of moved away from all the ritual, I do I do a lot of writing. Tarot's become a bigger piece of me. So it has think, changed. Well, and I was going to say, you, you've always kind of been a person when I've witnessed you. You've always given back on a lot of levels with writing and teaching and tarot and you know, all the things that you do, but, um, it almost seems like, uh, it almost seems like you've planted a lot of seeds that are now kind of coming up to sprout. So here's the thing that, uh, I was going to ask you, you have been, you know, you've been in practice for so long and you've encountered so many different types of people. Do you recognize other witches when you see them, even if they don't recognize themselves? It's going to sound egotistical, but yeah, yeah, I do recognize the the spark, mm-hmm. the potential in people. I knew you had the potential. I actually thought you were a witch when I met you, mm-hmm. way back. And I was really surprised when you said something that led me to believe that wasn't your path. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, misread that one. But yeah. And I think that we work magic in so many different ways. You know, yes. a hoodoo, conjure, and a hedge witch, they're going to have a lot more in common um, than they would with, like, a ceremonial magician, like a thelemus. A thelemus once told me the funniest thing. They're, they're ceremonial magicians. And he said he'd been to Wicca circles, and he said Wicca is like doing surgery in the kitchen. Thelema isn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was such a perfect, I mean, and he wasn't demeaning it. He, he just wasn't. It just, he liked the more precise, defined, you know, you think Wicca's got ritual? Dude, check out oh, Ceremonial yeah. Magicians. No. I've read, uh, I've got a book over here on ceremonial magic, and um, I got about halfway through it, and I was like, woo, that is a lot. Um but I can also see how it would help people. Uh, I can also see why people would be drawn to it. It's incredibly precise. It's almost mathematical yes. in, its, in its presentation. And I, I can understand people who have, you know, maybe an engineering type mind or a more analytical type mind or a very stylized way of being. I can absolutely understand why they would be drawn to it. Me, a person like me who cannot keep a schedule, who sometimes cannot keep commitments, who sometimes... Uh, you know, I, I put things off. I have to practice, you know, that would never work for me because I would always be behind. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I totally get that. And <laughs> there's a thing called pagan standard time. And I rant about it because <laughs> when I was, when I was high priestess in the circle, if I told people we're going to gather at quarter till ritual starts at a quarter after, and the door is going to be locked. Mm-hmm. I absolutely meant it. And a couple of people found that out the hard way. Ooh. They came to, they would come to the house. And they said, well, the light on the porch was out and I tried the door and it was locked. So I sat in my car till rituals over. And then they, I mean, I wasn't angry with them. I just, right. you know, we had a plan. And for me, it felt very disrespectful to say, we're going to, you know, to everybody else, to the other 10 people who showed up on time, you know, we're going to circle at 715 and they didn't show up. Well, it's a way to keep from disrupting the space, too. You know, I go to yoga regularly, and that's uh, something that I discovered really, really quickly (laughs) that was incredibly irritating. Um, The studio that I go to, you know, if she starts at 6 o'clock sharp, to me, that means be on your mat, be ready to go at 6 o'clock sharp, because we're going to start our breathing. That does not mean 
we're in the middle of breathing and we're laying in the floor trying to get our breath and someone rolls in at 6.07 and is banging and clanging around because you just can't get, you can't get mentally caught up when those things happen. Yeah. So I get it. I really get it. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I've always kind of wondered if you recognize that in other people because I'm finding, um, I'm finding just out in public spaces sometimes, sometimes I'll kind of have the head turn. You know how, um, you know, as a queer person, I'll, I'll have my gaydar will go off and I'll be like, oh, there goes some family. I'm now getting that uh, around who I perceive to be other witches or other magical people because sometimes it's the way they're dressed. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll notice a pentacle on them. Uh, sometimes I'll see something that's, you know, that sparks me and I'll be like, Oh, family, you know, and then how do you approach people? <laughs> you know, do you approach them holding up a pack of tarot cards or, you know, <laughs> I will, I will walk up to them and if they're wearing a pentagram, I'll just go, Mary mate. Mm -hmm. And y'all point that's at whatever awesome. they're, because I don't have my pen, my my ring on right now. Um, but you know, or I have my ring on. Do you recognize the one on my middle finger? Oh, you do. I hey. did. This, this is my ring. You guys, uh, Arwen gave this to me in Las Vegas, and um, yeah, it's really special to me. Like I've never, you know, it's an initiate ring basically, and the fact that she thought I was ready for it made my little heart sing with joy. <laughs> yeah, I just get every time I saw you, that ring was like. I can't even describe it, but it was almost itchy. So yeah. you're lucky I and didn't just take it and shove it to you at the bar one night. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because it, it's a perfect fit. I mean, it, it, it absolutely is a perfect fit. So, yeah, I'm loving that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. You're very welcome, darling. So we were going to talk a little bit, I think, about um, boundary or hula hoops and things of that nature. Yes, yes. Um so I kind of wanted you to talk about your ideas around your personal space and hula hoop. I had a question from a viewer a few weeks ago about how do you keep negativity and negative people out of your immediate space? And if they keep coming, what do you do about it? And I thought your hula hoop idea is really good. And I've been employing that a lot. So I just wanted you to talk a little bit about that so we can, we can say how wonderful it is. Well, the hula hoop is something my sister taught me. My sister's younger than I am, um, and not pagan. She was, I was talking about something, somebody upset me, blah, blah, blah. And Arn said, let me tell you about the hula hoop. And I thought, my sister's gone off the deep end. <laughs> and she said, here's what I learned. And I don't know if her therapist told her or somebody the else's a friend that was a therapist, but it's a therapist concept is where it came from. She held her arms out like like this, like she's holding something, and she said, I'm holding the hula hoop. I said, okay, that's great. Weirdo. And then she said, nothing in my hula hoop. All that's in my control. If it's outside of my hula hoop, it's not in my control. And I realized it was a way of setting up a boundary Yes. And understanding, because the, the biggest thing that drives me crazy is trying to control what I can't control. Right. You know, and that generally involves other people. <laughs> yes. You know. And so, so how, what are some ways that you maintain, um, you know, I've seen you do some of these things. And I've actually kind of, you know, taken some of the things that I've observed you do over the last several weeks. Um, so I've been maintaining my hula hoop because I want it to stay very clean and very positive and very happy. And, you know, when I let negative things into my hula hoop, it kind of makes me have a negative experience of the world. Like I kind of wake up grumpy or maybe I just kind of have a grouchy day or what have you. So I've been kind of, you know, here, here are my spaces. And one of the things that I've been doing is I've seen you do this when someone comes at you and then they're very, very negative. I've seen you redirect them verbally. Oh, well, yeah, but what was a good thing about that? Or, oh, but you look great today. And I've seen you kind of verbally redirect them from going down. And this is my favorite thing from going down the rabbit hole, you know, because sometimes when people start spiraling, they're not able to unspiral, you know, the, the negativity tornado. Yeah. And I, I do that, and um, I, I, I like doing that because I want people, and I don't want people to get weirded out or think that I think I'd are a negative pH. Right. Um, pH, I don't know what that stands for. But it, I don't know. I'm sitting there going, is that a piss head or what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
poo poo head probably. Head. <laughs> but you know, and and I do it to myself because I go into these negative spins. And I, I keep telling people, you know, I seek joy so that I am not doing anything else because I have a depressive personality. I have a negative tendency. Um, my husband teases me about awfulizing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I see a, a dog on the side of the road that we can't get around and get to in time. And I'm like, if we go back, he'll be hit by a car and spread all. She's like, maybe he just walked back into his yard. You know, maybe he didn't go out on the yard. So I have to keep seeking joy. You know, it's a, it's a self-defense thing for me. Absolutely. And when people come up to me and, you know, talk about their bad, horrible, awful day, tell me something good that happened. You know, I'm super sorry that happened. You know, what was the best thing that happened today? And sometimes they'll say that it's over. Awesome. That's a great thing. What are you going to do now? <laughs> you know, I, do, I don't give them the space, the whiteboard to draw their negativity across. That's good. And, you know, I've also seen you, and this is another thing that I've also employed too, because I've seen it really, you know, I've, I've known you for almost 15 years now, and I've seen 15 year ago Arwen to today Arwen, and there's been a huge progression. And you have definitely, you know, made some huge changes to actively choose positivity and to choose, you know, different positive behaviors and things like that. And it's, it's very inspiring because it's like, wow, I've seen you, you know, not to be condescending, but I've totally seen your happiness really like turn a corner and just blossom, you know, and not be miserable. And I, you know, one of the things that, that I've kind of taken from you is I've made sure to surround myself with other people who are actively seeking joy. Yeah. I don't want to be surrounded by people that are constantly in the middle of drama or ugly behavior, or they, they are people that really can't control their anger or can't control their negativity or people that they go down a rabbit hole and they stay there. I just really, you know, I kind of take space with that. And I've seen you do that. I've seen you really work to surround yourself with people that have very healthy behavior. I have to. I just, I just have to. Um, because the more positive you get, it's just like, you know, building your house. You want to build your house with the best material. Yes. You know, and negativity is, in a way, it's a rotting piece of ourselves. Now, it is. There's a reason to be negative sometimes. So people have honest, sincere, real reasons to be negative. I mean, I'm not yep. dismissing that at all. But when we're negative and we stay there. Right. You know, I've had people come to me for tea and tears, you know, and I'm going to be there. I'm going to let you be negative. I'm going to let you cry. I'm going to let you weep. I'm going to let you be angry. That's okay. But if you come back to me the next day with the same thing. Right. Uh -huh. You got 24 hours to wallow, then let's change things. Absolutely, and don't you find too that you're you're, you know, you have a little more room for tangible things. Okay, someone is is physically ill, their house burned down, they lost their job, you know, real tangible things. I'm finding. Um, I have a lot more room for those types of things than I do for uh, someone posted something on Facebook that I didn't like or someone there's a picture in a magazine that pissed me off or uh, my favorite drag queen didn't win on RuPaul's Drag Race. You know, those type of things I'm thinking, you know, you got to choose where your energy is going to go. And those, you know, some things just don't matter. Some things are out in the cyber world or they're just intangible things that, again, you can't control. And those are the things that I've really kind of taught myself, let go of that. That doesn't matter, you know. Get upset about things that you can either, A, control or change, especially if it's something about you that you have control over, or B, if a person has lost their job, I do have a little bit of control in helping them. I can offer to help them or drive them somewhere or help them work on their resume. Those are some things that I can actively do, Yeah, you know, but... You know, some things, uh, some things you don't have any control over, especially when it comes to other people. And that's, again, the hula hoop. I'm learning. <laughs> yep, yep. And I don't want people to get shit on my hula hoop because then it gets kind of slippery and I lose my grip. 
Yes, yeah. yes. So, you know, what are some ways in which, so let's say if you have a person who you've, you've kept your hula hoop clean with a person, but if a person kind of insists on getting up on that boundary and kind of you've got, you got shit on your hula hoop and you're seeing that they're constantly coming, what are some ways in which you keep those boundaries clean? Do you take space with that person? Do you meditate on it? How, how do you deal with that? Um, I'm a repeater. I repeat some of the same. Look, you were... my phone's telling me I need to call you. <laughs> my phone's a little confused. <laughs> but I will repeat things. I will say, oh, so what we talked about last week that's still going on? Well, no, this is about last week. Oh. And I don't really give them anything new. Right. That's a, that's a good thing, though, because, you know, a lot of therapists will do that. They will basically feed someone back what they put out so that the person can hear, wow, I'm still stuck on that thing. I haven't moved on. I really probably need to either do something to move myself on or realize I've got a little bit of a stopping point here that I need to address. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest boundary issue I have, and this doesn't happen with people uh, anymore. I fixed it. But it was, hey, pull a card for me. Now, certain people can do that, and I do it for certain people without them asking. One of them is named Ember, um, and one of yep. them is named Tennessee. You know, and th that's fine. There's, an, there's a couple other people. But I was getting uh, people doing it, and I uh -oh, went Uh-oh, you're cutting out, girl. Uh-oh, can you see me now? Your picture has stopped. Uh-oh, hang on. Okay, let, try say something, and let's see how we're doing. You are so crazy. <laughs> okay, I think we're back. I think we're back. And we're back. Um, but my response to them was, I would be so honored to pull a card for you. I have a 30-minute opening on law or a full hour on the next day. If you want to schedule one, here's how you do that. Smart. You know, and I had somebody get mad at me, and I said, you know, it's my job. I have a friend that can do that, but you know what? She's a veterinarian. I pick my phone up at odd hours and say, the cat just ate this. What do I do? And she gives me free advice. I have no qualms about reading for her at any given time. You know? Right. So, but and that one, that one's a real sore spot for a lot of readers because we get a lot. Like on my Facebook page, I get people who say, will you do a reading for me? And I'll say, yeah, I'll go here. And they'll say, oh, I just wanted you to do you know, a really quick reading for me. I said, no, <laughs> it's my job. It's that's my living. Good, you know, that's a good point. And I probably, um, you know, I'm even, and I, I am not a professional tarot reader and I don't read cards for people and I don't read poems for people. And, uh, you know, I'm even finding that, you know, sometimes on my Facebook page, people will come and say, Hey, can you please do a love spell for me? Or can you please do a money spell for me? Or can you do some type of spell for me? And my rote answer is, you know, I actually don't do those types of spells for people. Um, now, if Tennessee asked me to do some type of working, absolutely. You know, if, 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 if it's something that I feel very compelled to do or feel very um, intense with, I'm not at the point where I will do things like that on a professional level for people. So I tell people no, because I don't want to give people the impression that I'm at that level. But it kind of made me wonder if that happens to tarot readers a lot, and I suspected that it did. It does. And we talked to each other. I had a very unusual request. It wasn't for tarot. It was for a spell. And I think maybe it was, oh, no, it was um, Nadia. And oh. I, I mentioned, we were talking, because she's a professional reader, too. And so we were right. talking about this and chit-chatting, and I said, oh, and I got this crazy request for this. And she went, oh, my God. I got the same thing. Mm. So apparently this person had been going around to different people they thought might do a, a particular, and it was a crazy spell. I, I, I will go out there on that limb and say it was a crazy spell. Was it, was it the diaper woman? No, it was the eternity woman. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And like, no, mm -mm, not, not happening. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes I have to set up um, 
I picture porcupine spines all around me in my hula hoop and that to get people because yeah. sometimes I go into my I just want to be left alone. Right. Yeah. You know, right. And if I have to be out, you know, then I have to be out. But you know, I have to take time for me or, or find a, a quiet spot. So, and I used to do that at house parties a lot. I'd go hide. You know. I, yeah, I can imagine that that probably, um, you know, I think people probably should understand, too, anyone who does any type of divination work for other people, even for themselves, you know, that you're really opening up your energy pool, and it does exhaust you and drain you, and it, it does, it's not like it's costing you you know, a physical thing, but sometimes it does, you know, you, you get physically tired. I've seen, I know I've, I've seen you read for multiple people in social situations and I've seen you at the end of it. You're like, you know, I'm done. I, I have nothing left. I'm good. Yeah. And then I have to eat. I have to, you know, yeah. there are things I need to do. I wash my hands. So yes, but, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to tell people, about something that happened last night. It's not happening tonight, but I'm going to tell them what happened. While we were chit-chatting, we had a visit from one of Ember's relatives. Yes. <laughs> um, totally unexpected. She had been talking about doing her ancestor work, and I said, you want me to tell uh, you what I said? It was really specific. Do you want me to tell them what I said? Yeah, go ahead and tell them, and then I'll say, yeah. <laughs> what I was told was to tell Ember about the handkerchief. And Ember mm -hmm. said, yeah, I know well, I know what that is. And I said, and there's something wrapped in the handkerchief. And I couldn't tell what it was, and the person couldn't tell me that it was dark. It was small and dark was all they could kind of give me. And Ember told me. I did. I said, uh, and, and I had not told you this, but about two weeks ago, I had taken my grandfather and my dad out to the cemetery, which is out in the hills of Arkansas, where um, a lot of my family is buried, two, three, four generations of my family. And we went to see my grandmother's uh, grave. Just, I, you know, I go out there and visit sometimes, put something down, you know, see how it's doing and have a conversation with her. And my great-grandmother, who showed up last night, who was talking about the handkerchief and what was in the handkerchief, apparently knew that two weeks ago I had picked up an acorn off of my grandmother's grave and brought it home, and I had wrapped it in my great-grandmother's handkerchief and had it on my ancestor altar. And the point of that was that I was trying to get some clarity about something that I want to do, and I thought, Hmm, here's an acorn off of my grandmother's grave. I will use this as planting the seed, and I will see what message comes from that. And I got a very clear message last night. Yeah. Very clear. Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like the swamp boys. Do it. Do it. Yes. She said to do it, so I am going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, I've I've got I've had two or three projects on my mind. One of them I know needs to needs to stew a little while, um, but I've got two of them on my mind, and one of them needs to go right now, according to my great grandmother. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny, y'all, because she um, she had shown up before, and just when I tell people that I talk to dead people. It's more like they just show up and, and tell me to say something. I'm more like a pass-through than anything else. But what else do we need to chat with people about tonight? I think that we want to just uh, remind people that um, we have, we're going to do uh, Witchy Women Wednesdays uh, or Thursdays, depending on how our software works. <laughs> we'll do this every couple of weeks, um, and it will be on Arwen's channel, and let me see. Did you do your giveaway already? No, my 1333. I've hit the 1333 subscribers. I'm going to pull on Sunday. So anybody that's a subscriber between up to Sunday. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. I'll put you in the jar. And I'm going to pull uh, two names to give away two prizes. Nice. So you've got yours going on. I have got a giveaway for a detox water bottle going on. Uh, let me see. Bridget, tie-dye witch, has a giveaway going on. There's lots of fun things happening right now in the community. I love it. Yeah, I'll, I'll put links for Ember and, and Bridget's 
down on the bottom. I'm so excited to get my graveyard kit, my graveyard Girl. dirt kit. I ordered one too, and I'm like, border dirt? Yes! <laughs> yes, and I've already got plans for it. So I found a quote today, and I'm going to leave y'all with this quote. Do you wish the world were happy? Then remember day by day just to scatter seeds of kindness as you pass along the way. That's by Ella that. Wheeler Wilcox, who was a poet born this day in 1850. And she died at 1919, so she died when she was just 69 years old, so she was a young girl. But, yeah, but I, uh, I think that goes back to all the negativity in the world, because shit happens, guys. Don't hang on to it. You know, if somebody treats you badly, bullies you, picks on you, stubs your toe, yanks your hair, go tell three other people something nice about themselves. Do for somebody else and get rid of that negativity that got laid on you. Are you there? I am. Oh, you cut out again. Do something nice for somebody. Yeah. And like, get rid of the negativity <laughs> that was given to you. There you go. And seek joy, y'all. I'm the Big Fat Witch. Blessed be, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, you guys.